Hi, I'm Palmdale Mayor Steve Hofbauer. We take great pride in the city of Palmdale in creating a safe and healthy city for all of our residents. We build some outstanding relationships with our community partners to achieve our goals and continue to move forward. Let's hear some more about what's going on in important areas of community safety and health. It certainly is another banner year in Palmdale when it comes to fighting crime, with yet another precipitous drop in our crime rate. The Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, Palmdale, reported a 9.35% decrease in the number of Part 1 crimes reported for all of 2018, resulting in a crime rate of 192 crimes per 10,000 population for the year. It marked the lowest crime rate in Palmdale in nearly a quarter of a century. To put it in perspective, back in 1990, the crime rate hit a high of 467.71. At that point, the city set a goal to push the crime rate below 300 by 2009, which it did by 2007, and then reset the goal to drive it below 200, which was accomplished in 2018. And we have no plans of stopping there. We'll continue to build upon the tried and true formula, which engages the Sheriff's Department, city staff, and our community to partner together to help make Palm a safe and vibrant city. These relationships have been cultivated over time through collaborations such as National Night Out, held every summer at Dominic Masari Park. Trunk or Treat, a free event which will be coming up on Sunday, October 27th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. in the Hammock Center parking lot. The monthly Coffee with the Deputy events held throughout the city. And of course, the nearly 400 neighborhood watch groups and park watch meetings, which bring everyone together to openly talk and discuss the needs and issues in the community. New technologies have also been introduced to help in the fight against crime and maintain code standards, including new computer programs which help our public safety officers track and record data which greatly helps to resolve issues and prevent them from growing. But with over 104 square miles to cover, it's vital that our residents help be the eyes and ears of the community, and a huge reason why the crime rate continues to plummet. According to preliminary statistics, 2019 could end up as the year with the lowest crime rate to date. The city's Neighborhood Services Department is also being proactive in another area, and that is public health. The city has received grant funding from the California Department of Justice to establish a tobacco enforcement and education program. The funding provided for a partnership with the Sheriff's Department to conduct inspections of tobacco retailers to ensure that they were not selling to minors or making single cigarette sales. The inspections netted 92 notices of violations and 17 citations. To help retailers better understand and keep in compliance, the city developed a tobacco retailer's guide and established a no-smoking weekly park patrol to keep our parks smoke-free. Education was also a part of the grant funding, and the city ran an extensive anti-tobacco advertising campaign, featuring billboards and online messaging to discourage tobacco use, especially among our youth. Good health is a message that is also championed by Palmdale's medical community, with organizations such as Kaiser Permanente, Heritage Sierra Medical Group, and Palmdale Regional Medical Center providing quality healthcare options for our residents. The birth of Palmdale came with the closing of Lancaster Community Hospital back in the late 2000s. The decision was made to move to Palmdale in part because of the incredible view on the hill but more importantly because of the ease of working with the city and its leadership. One of our goals is to ensure that we're providing all necessary services to the community in order to improve the entire health of the community and also be an important economic development tool for the town by encouraging other companies to come here because of the quality of health care we offer. We're currently going through a multi-million dollar conversion of technology, the opening of new OB services, consideration of a freestanding behavioral health hospital, and other services in order to ensure that we keep up with the growth of the community and its needs. I'm Mayor Pro Tem Austin Bishop, representing District 1. You know, housing and homelessness are critical issues that have lots of people talking about and wondering if there are any solutions that will work. Here at the City of Palmdale, we're addressing these head-on and have some great projects and programs in the works. Check it out. One of the most pressing needs of our time is the need for affordable, quality housing. 
even though the median price for a home in the Antelope Valley is roughly half of that in the greater LA area, the cost of housing, along with other factors, have been a part of the cause for the increase of homelessness on a regional level. And the city is doing its part to address the issue and to continue to connect those in need with the right services available. Last year, the city and its partners engaged in an extensive homeless outreach campaign to provide an assessment of homelessness in Palmdale, identify the resources available to address the challenges, seek opportunities for local and regional collaboration, and to develop local goals to address the specific housing and supportive service needs of Palmdale's homeless residents. Our strong relationships with regional partners and our proactive approach to assisting those in need is key to having a relatively low homeless count over the years in our community. Working with community partners including Advancing Communities Together, Antelope Valley Youth Build, Victory Outreach, Antelope Valley Partners for Health, Mental Health America, Valley Oasis, Salvation Army, Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority, the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department, and South Antelope Valley Emergency Services or SAVES, the city developed a comprehensive plan to address homelessness in Palmdale with some key goals including preventing episodes of homelessness within the community, assisting homeless individuals and families by providing relevant and accurate information that creates a path for them to no longer be homeless, empowering local service providers, community partners, and those with a vested interest to improve their response to individuals and families experiencing homelessness, and increasing the opportunities for the homeless to create and maintain a sustainable lifestyle that includes affordable housing, education, and employment or vocational training opportunities. Right before the birth of the Palmdale Dream Center. Um, Mike Miller, Rossi Cherry, Olivia Cherry talked together and saw that the need for uh, a transitional housing. One of the students actually was kicked out at, on his 18th birthday. He was a foster kid and had nowhere to go. These are one of the things that caused Rossi and the team to come up with the Palmdale Dream Center. So now it houses 11 tenants who possibly would have been homeless without it. And so it's because of the uh, partnership with the city, they were able to uh, give us an abandoned building and with the city and with the community and with the students of Youth Build, uh, they made it a dream center. So now it's a place that went from, uh, I would say, the beauty out of the ashes. As we mentioned earlier, affordable housing is a key component in the battle against homelessness. And the city of Palmdale has several important projects going to provide quality, affordable housing to our residents. One such development is located next to Palmdale City Hall. It's called the Corson Arts Colony and was built in conjunction with Meta Housing of Los Angeles. The first phase, Corson Arts Colony East, was completed in December and its 81 units are now fully leased. 20 of those units were used for the permanent supportive housing project program through Los Angeles County Department of Health Services to assist those who need help the most. The second phase, Coruscant Arts Colony West, with 80 units, was completed in September. 40 of its units are permanent supportive housing for veterans, including veterans who may not qualify for other available programs. This innovative development includes an art gallery, classrooms, gyms, community rooms, bicycle storage and repair shops, a small amphitheater, a playground, and a community garden, all with the purpose of helping integrate, heal, and strengthen the tenants, many of whom will be veterans dealing with issues such as PTSD. Also part of the project is the new Corson Pool, Pool House, and Splash Pad, which are under construction at the site of the former Corson Pool. It is expected to be completed by the end of this year. Another project that you may have heard about is the Home for Families Veteran Enriched Neighborhood located on the corner of Division Street and Avenue R. They are developing a 56-unit veteran owner-occupied neighborhood consisting of duplexes, a community room, and a tot lot. With funding provided through CalVet, the housing authority of the city of Palmdale, and Homes for Families, the project has been a true collaboration between public and private entities. Perhaps you were among the hundreds of volunteers with Homes for Families who helped with the construction through the various build days or the recent Extreme Makeover television program. While the TV cameras were rolling, community volunteers helped build a duplex and playground and presented to two Antelope Valley families. But I've also met other people that are out here volunteering that will also be moving into this development. And honestly, it brings me 
joy because you can see that there was a there was a hopelessness at one time of people thinking that they would forever be in an apartment, they would never be homeowners, and there was people running up to me telling me their plot number, like, oh, I'm moving in on my plot number, you know, in in seven months they're going to start building on that, and it, it's their dreams coming true, but they're also working for the dream. So it's not that it's just a handout, which I also feel is so amazing about the program because uh, military men and women like to work for what it is that they receive. So it's 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 very touching and it's very humbling and um, it's exciting. I'm excited for these families. Stay tuned for that episode to be aired on the HGTV channel next year. In addition to those two veteran families, 16 more veteran households are veterans in the process of application review or who have been approved to be part of this new neighborhood. There is much to be done in the fight against homelessness, but there are victories being won every day. Council Member Juan Carrillo and I represent District 4. One of the reasons why Pamela is such a wonderful place to live is because we have so many beautiful parks, amenities and events for all people of all ages to enjoy. And we have a lot of exciting new plans in store to make living here even better. Knowing that a thriving community is one that is safe, healthy, and has multiple opportunities for recreation, cultural enhancement, and just plain fun, the city reached out to our residents last year to gather input on what they wanted to see as we moved forward with park designs for the new Rancho Vista Park on the corner of Bolts Ranch Road and Trade Center Drive, as well as Phase 2 of Yellen Park on Avenue S. In 2020, we will hold more community engagement meetings to discuss future plans for Arne Quinones and Palmdale Oasis Parks. Make plans to be there as we want to hear from you. In addition to planning for future parks, the city was also active making improvements on our existing ones, which are visited by thousands of residents annually. Our heavily used soccer fields at Dominic Masari Park received a much needed renovation. The infields at Best of the West Softball Complex, which hosts dozens of regional tournaments each year, were also redone. We replaced several playground components at Marie Kerr, Manzanita, and Dominic Masari Parks for the enjoyment of our youngest citizens. We held a community cleanup and refresh for Corson Park and added much desired and needed shade structures to Yellen Park. Coming soon will be a new passive park, thanks to the innovative Amargosa Creek Recharge Project, located near the California Aqueduct at 25th Street West and Elizabeth Lake Road. The project, a collaborative effort between the City of Palmdale, Palmdale Water District, Antelope Valley East Kern Water Agency, and the Los Angeles County Water Districts, will bring water from the California Aqueduct to a series of recharge ponds, where it will percolate into the aquifer beneath the ground. Not only will it recharge the ground water basin beneath Palmdale, it will also create a natural recreation space for residents with a nature park and a habitat restoration area. This $17 million project is expected to open early next year. We also opened a brand new national fitness court at Polona Vista Park in partnership with Antelope Valley Hospital, Kaiser Permanente, High Desert Medical Group, and the Warnock Foundation. It features over 30 pieces of exercise equipment arranged in stations that allow for up to 28 people to use the court at the same time. The system features a series of full body exercises that can be completed in just seven minutes. The seven movements in seven minutes is a simple yet powerful workout created for a range of athletic abilities that is shown to burn more calories per minute than most other forms of exercise. And just a few short weeks ago, we held a ribbon cutting for newly refurbished basketball courts at Dominic Masari and Marie Kerr Parks, including a new gaming room at the Marie Kerr Rec Center, courtesy of six-time NBA All-Star, Los Angeles Clipper, and Palmdale native Paul George and the 2K Foundation. The festivities included a scrimmage basketball game between Paul's alma mater, Knight High, and crosstown rivals Highland, as well as an appearance by PG himself. Improvements were also made at several key 
key facilities throughout the city. At the Palmdale City Library, for instance, we expanded the computer center and improved ADA access to the area formerly known as the pit, as well as continuing to expand innovative programs for people of all ages. The room we're sitting in now is sporting upgrades in its audiovisual equipment, which was part of the major city council chamber renovations. Over at the Palmdale Playhouse, which features community theater and programs year-round, we replaced its well-worn dressing room. That room will get a lot of use over the winter holidays as we present a host of activities, including Santa's Wonderland, where kids can meet Old St. Nick, tell them what's on their gift list, and have their photo taken. A visit by the Ambassador of America, Charles Phoenix, and his hilarious holiday jubilee. The popular sing-along with Santa and his elves. And finishing up with musical performances by the West Coast Classical Orchestra. You definitely want to check out the Palmdale Playhouse this holiday season. What brings life to our parks and amenities the city offers is the wide array of special events and activities that take place each year. With its rich diversity, Palmdale offers something for everyone, from a celebration of the arts at Kaleidoscope at the Amphitheater in October, to a gathering of people of faith at the annual Grace Fest held in September. Concerts and movies bring people out by the thousands during the summer, and the annual display of the AV Wall, a half-size replica of the Vietnam Wall Memorial in Washington, D.C., which returns to the amphitheater this November in celebration of its 10th anniversary with a week full of special ceremonies. And at the heart of the city, Ponsatlan Square hosts events year-round, including the Vets for Veterans Car Show, the AV International Heritage Picnic, the AV Taco Festival, Music in the Parks, and the holiday favorite, American Classic Christmas, an event that was born from people in our community who wanted to give back. One of the things that we really loved about putting on American Classic Christmas is it takes so many people to put it on and with so many different gifts and talents. Now we had a background in production, but a lot of the people that work with us never have, but they have a heart to serve the community, they have a love for the community, they have um, just really a desire to connect with one another in the community, so there's always a place for them to serve. And we need to get the word out there more, we need to give our community uh, more reasons to be proud about about Palmdale and I really think it's our responsibility as community members to partner with the city the city folk take some of the burden from them and uh, you know build up hello I'm council member Laura Betancourt from district 3 Good infrastructure is critical to the success and the prosperity of any community. Here in Palmdale, our means of transportation are improving and expanding to meet the needs and the demands of our residents and our industry partners. So let's learn more about how and what we are doing to improve, repair, and create new community assets. Indeed, good infrastructure is vital to the success and well-being of any community. Here in Palmdale, it's a top priority of our City Council and our Public Works team. Probably the biggest project of the year is the Pear Blossom Highway Rebuild. After years of heavy stress from 34,000 vehicles a day, including many heavy trucks, Pear Blossom Highway deteriorated and suffered from many cracks, potholes, and poor ride quality. In September, the City, partnering with Los Angeles County, began the project to completely rebuild a 3.2-mile stretch of Pear Blossom Highway from the California Aqueduct Bridge at Old Nato Road to 55th Street East. It will provide a new smooth driving service on this crucial roadway and additional improvements such as intersection upgrades with new signal equipment, new pedestrian equestrian push button systems, new upgraded ADA compliant curb ramps, and new ladder style crosswalks. Also improvements to current traffic patterns that will enhance safety and traffic flow at 25th Street East and Barrel Springs Road to 30th Street East. It will also add a 2100 foot median barrier between 25th Street East and Barrel Springs Road to 30th Street East to help prevent head-on traffic collisions. The project will be done in three phases and will take up to a year to complete, including construction breaks during the winter months, and the road will have a life expectancy of over 40 years. During construction, motorists are encouraged to take alternate routes. If you'd like to receive email updates on the project, you can text PEARBLOSSOM to 22828 or visit www.pearblossom.com 
awesomerebuild.com. Another heavily traveled route that is getting some much needed improvements is State Route 138 Antelope Valley 14 Freeway, funded by $200 million in Measure R equity grant funds to help design and construct unbuilt segments of State Route 138 within Los Angeles County. It is the first of 11 projects along the 138-14 corridor, five of which are in Palmdale. This specific project proposes to alleviate the existing bottleneck on the southbound 14 and increase the capacity of the northbound off-ramp to Rancho Vista Boulevard. Major components of the project include the addition of one acceleration lane by widening the southbound 14 from Technology Drive to north of Palmdale Boulevard and widening the Rancho Vista Boulevard off-ramp to increase storage for both left turn and right turn traffic. Completion is expected in early 2020. The city also recently began a road improvement project that will widen segments and eliminate gaps in two sections of Rancho Vista Boulevard. Construction began last month and is expected to continue through July 2020. The $7 million project will also include construction of new curb, gutter and sidewalk, a 5 foot wide class 3 bicycle route in each direction, landscape raised medians between 27th West and Dunbar Street, drainage improvements, curb wrap modifications to meet current ADA standards, modification of existing traffic signals, and other miscellaneous improvements. The Avenue R Complete Streets project, which will provide street improvements on Avenue R from Sierra Highway to 25th Street East, is also now underway. The city will use Measure M funds to cover a portion of the overall construction costs, estimated to be $5.6 million, with remaining construction funds expected to be offered by the state of California. There are some future transportation-based infrastructure projects that are very important to the growth and economic vitality of Palmdale and the Greater Antelope Valley. One is the proposed Virgin Train USA high-speed rail project, which will link Las Vegas to Victorville and then continue to Palmdale. That project took another leap forward last month when a California committee approved $300 million in tax-exempt private activity bonds to help finance the project. The train line linking Las Vegas with Victorville is the first phase of a plan to help develop high-speed rail between Las Vegas and Union Station in downtown Los Angeles. The second phase would add about 50 miles of track between Victorville and Palmdale, where the line would eventually join the California high-speed rail system. Although the California high-speed rail project is currently focused on its northern route, work is being done to prepare for its arrival in Southern California. The city recently held a public meeting to unveil the draft station area plan and Palmdale Transit Area Specific Plan to inform residents of the future plans for the high-speed rail stations coming to Palmdale, which will transform our downtown into a multimodal hub unlike any in the world. It will combine transportation, housing, shopping and dining and create an amazing downtown experience. California High-Speed Rail Project Southern California portion also took a step forward last month in advancing work for Union Station in LA. Together with the California State Transportation Agency and Los Angeles County Metro, an agreement was reached to steer more than $400 million in Proposition 1A fund towards the transformative link Union Station project. The uh, intermodal system that you are proposing uh, will be very, very beneficial to the entire region uh, for our individual citizens as well as businesses. And let's not forget why we're really doing that. And that's for the future development and opportunities for local employment and growth here in the Antelope Valley in the two primary cities of Palmdale and Lancaster. It's exciting to be part of this and to watch it grow. And uh, as we used to say years ago, uh, Larry Chimboli used to say, will this happen in my lifetime? So now I have to ask, I know this will happen in my lifetime. Last month, the Metro Board of Directors unanimously approved a motion by Supervisor Catherine Barger to fund projects to address operational challenges and enhance the potential of Metrolink's Antelope Valley Line that will lead to more frequent, reliable, and faster service. With Palmdale Mayor Steve Hoffbauer and members of the North Los Angeles County Transportation Coalition offering their support, the improvements will add round-trip service at peak time and on weekends, as well as improving peak service times. The culmination of all these transportation improvements leads to a highly anticipated opening of the Palmdale Regional Airport. After several past attempts to launch service there, we are at long last at the cusp of reaching a viable and sustainable operation with a sizable population and employment base that strongly supports the demand for commercial air service in Palmdale. The city is currently exploring options for financing, developing, and managing the terminal facility. The keys to its success will be continued community 
and military support for expansion and growth, the development of a new terminal, and the ability to accommodate the aviation demand with affordable terminal development and infrastructure. Palmdale Regional Airport as a new air service market is expected to have reasonable and sustainable service upon initial startup. We hope to have some exciting announcements to share with you in 2020 on new developments. I'm Richard Loa, council member from District 2, representing the west side of Palmdale. To fund everything we want to do to make Palmdale a great city requires a strong economic engine to fuel growth and provide the revenues we need. We're working hard to build a diverse economy and meet the needs of the next generation of workers and goods and services. Take a look. The key to building a strong economy is having a solid roadmap in place to take us where we want and need to be. Palmdale has been fortunate to have had a good general plan that helped us build our city and create thriving economic centers on our east, west, and central corridors. However, our general plan is over 25 years old. Things have changed and are continuing to change. So the time has come to focus on the future with a new, revised, and updated general plan. The new general plan will be the city's 25-year guide for growth and development. It will create a collective vision for the future to improve the identity and quality of life in Palmdale. The general plan will address important community topics such as new growth, housing, sustainability, safety, mobility, and health. We began this comprehensive update earlier this year by reaching out to residents through community surveys and meetings. A general plan advisory committee or GPAC was formed, comprised of nine community representatives representatives who will over the next three years be part of developing a bold new vision. There will be updates and opportunities for engagement along the way and we encourage everyone to be part of the exciting next chapter in Palmdale's history. Another important component in setting the table for economic success is to ensure adequate funding for the many projects and services our residents need. One way to obtain the funding needed is to get an accurate count of all our residents and that is done through the census. As mandated by the Constitution, Every 10 years, America comes together to count every resident in the United States. It counts population and households, providing the basis for reapportioning congressional seats, redistricting, and distributing more than $675 billion in federal funds annually to support vital programs for states, counties, and communities impacting housing, education, transportation, employment, health care, and public policy. In short, it's vital that we all get counted. The city will be actively involved in Census 2020, and we encourage everyone to learn more at 2020census.gov. Another new development that will impact both residents and businesses in Palmdale is the new Community Choice Aggregate, or CCA, program, which was adopted by the Palmdale City Council in March. A CCA is an alternative to the investor-owned utility company, where the CCA purchases power Power on behalf of its residents and other constituents. It will offer customer options of what sources they can get their power from, including traditional sources and renewables, or a combination of the two. The council passed an ordinance and adopted a resolution to allow the city to form a CCA through Lancaster Choice Energy, and the city expects to begin servicing residential customers in September 2020. Residents will be automatically opted in per federal regulations, but they have the option to revert back to Southern California Edison service at no cost to them during the two months before and the two months after service begins. Once the program is implemented, the energy will be procured by the City of Palmdale and rates will be set by the Palmdale City Council. Stay tuned for more information as the program rolls out. On the job front, the big news this year was the official announcement of the Air Force building the B-21 Raider bomber in Palmdale at Northrop Grumman. The $100 billion contract was awarded in 2015 but the production site had not been announced. This is great news for the Valley, as thousands of jobs will be created to produce the next generation bomber. And it's estimated that each aerospace job creates three to five other jobs, either in the support or services industries. Such is the case with the recent groundbreaking by AJ Iliopoulos Commercial Industrial Development Inc.'s U.S. Tool Group Northrop facility. In Palmdale's Fairway Business Park, U.S. Tool Group supplies the aerospace industry with specialized tools, primarily cutting tools made of high-end 
metal and used in manufacturing today's aircraft and space vehicles. Meanwhile, over at Lockheed, work continues on the LMH-1 hybrid airship and Lockheed's low-boom ultrasonic aircraft, a $247.5 million contract for NASA. The highly acclaimed AFAB program, a joint effort by the city, Antelope Valley College, and our aerospace partners, continues to provide training and opportunities for a much-needed workforce to meet the demand for skilled labor. All this good news on the job front has sparked new interest in developers and retailers to bring their brands and services to Palmdale. Chambers of Commerce have historically been the biggest advocate for the small business community. We couldn't provide the resources we do to our chamber membership if it weren't for our relationship with the city of Palmdale. Some openings we celebrated over the past year in Palmdale included new restaurants, La Palma Mexican Grill on Palmdale Boulevard, John Smith's Subs in the Super Target Center on 47th Street East, Trio Coffee and Burger Inn, both located on Tierra Subida, Mi Ranchito on Palmdale Boulevard, and Blue Maki Sushi on 10th Street West. Firehouse Subs will be returning soon to the Mall Ring Road, and Wendy's is opening a location on the Miracle Mile, 47th Street East. Brain Balance, an after-school learning center, Social Media Chow, a marketing firm, It's Boba Time, next to Yoshinoya on Rancho Vista Boulevard, and World Food Market on 10th Street West also opened. One of the biggest names to announce their arrival was Sprouts Farmers Market. Specializing in fresh, natural, and organic products, Sprouts will be the anchor store for a new development coming to Palmdale on the northwest corner of Rancho Vista Boulevard and 15th Street West. The project will also include several other retail establishments, such as restaurants and salons, as well as residential housing. The housing component will be a gated complex with amenities such as a recreation building, picnic area, and swimming pool. The big news in East Palmdale is the announcement that Aldi Grocery Store, the popular discount grocery chain, will be breaking ground on a new location on the southwest corner of 47th Street East and Avenue S. The Antelope Valley Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, now going in its second decade uh, has a lot of memories and a lot of connections with the city of Palmdale. Uh, not only have we been an instrument in helping promote the city, but also been a benefactor of the wonderful ideas and social innovation that lives within the team at the city of Palmdale.